I don't have an extensive collection of autographed albums, but the ones I do have, I really do appreciate, think are really cool. Ones that I found digging through collections or even artists that I've met in person. If you wanna check them out, stick around on this episode, Talking About Records. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Final, a small chain of independent shops in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you're not local but you are in the U.S., you can shop online at ntxfinal.com and would love it if you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us across social media on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Let's take a look at my autographed albums. Like I said, I really don't have that many. I am not the type of person who has ever really chased autographs. In fact, if you uh, you told me I could uh, have an autograph from from a musician I really respect, or if I could just you know shake their hand and have a couple minutes to talk to them, I'd probably just take the conversation. Um, but autographs are cool; I do appreciate them. Um, the main reason I don't have a lot of my collection, like I said, is because I don't seek them out. If it's not something I got personally from uh, from an interaction with the person, then I really don't find a whole lot of value in it. I have a few, like I mentioned, but uh, but out of my 3,000 records, I think I pulled less than 15 or around 15 out that are autographed. So very uh, very few and far between as far as the albums. Um, the reason why I'm excited to shoot this video is because a lot of these come with stories, which is obviously the best part about um, about getting to flip through records that I haven't looked at in a long time until kind of where they came from and where the autograph came from in the cases where I actually know. So. Um, as I kind of mentioned, some of these I did find in collections, believe it or not. Others um, have been kind of passed through friends or other connections or uh, people I actually met myself. So first and foremost, uh, I think there's only two in here that I got from collections. Um, I, I, I'm sure there's other, other autographs that I've run across over the years, but none that I've held on to. And of course, you have to take them all with a grain of salt if you didn't get it yourself because you really don't know if it's actually an autograph. So let's start with a couple of those, at least with one where I have no idea if it's real or not. But I am in Texas. So when you run across Willie Nelson's greatest hits and it's got this signature in ballpoint pen, I'm gonna try and get it close there so you can see it. I have no idea if that's Willie's signature, but I'm gonna say it is. And I haven't gone and Googled uh, what his signature looks like. Um, but I thought that was really cool. And again, being in Texas, you find a lot of Willie Nelson records, but I've never run across one with a signature before. So I do need to look it up and, and see. It's not the type of thing where I would take it to get authenticated and uh, you know hope it's real valuable or anything. I just thought it was a really cool piece. And uh, for me, uh, having an autographed Willie record, whether or not it's real or not, you know, in my mind it's real. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it in the collection. And it's on a greatest hits, as you can see. It's kind of a roughed up copy. It's not the greatest copy, um, but really cool and something that I was excited to find. Um, I found this locally, probably I don't know, it was three or four years ago, right before I started NTX, when I was digging through collections. A guy had a collection of um, some albums. And then he said mostly sports memorabilia. So he had a ton of other autographs, uh, which gave me a little confidence because that meant he was probably an autograph chaser at some point. Uh, most of the all, all or all of the autographs I remember were all on baseball cards or jerseys or uh, baseballs themselves, you know, things like that. Uh, and then there, he had a small stack of records that I remember picking up, um, probably you know 20, 30 records, and this was one of them in there. So. Like I said, have no idea if that's actually Willie's signature, but in my mind it is, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it. Following suit, this is an, this is another record. I think this is the only other one out of this uh, out of this crate here that uh, <clears throat> that I dug out of a collection. This is the Country Elvis Conway Twitty, his album Solid Gold. As you can see, you got a big black uh, signature there, black marker. And I don't know if this is real either, but I will say when I first discovered this, this is going back several years, um, I posted this, I think it was on Instagram, 
and uh, and phrased the question, you know, any Conway collectors out there who might know it, and I put the hashtags and, and that type of thing to maybe catch someone's eye. And sure enough, someone replied and said they were a big Conway Twitty collector and historian and have tons of autographs, and they said that it was absolutely 100% legit. So I thought that was pretty cool, and again, I'm taking them for their word at that. That's uh, that's an actual Conway uh, Conway signature. So the first two, not bad. Starting out with Willie and Conway, right? So uh, I almost forgot about these because normally when I go through my collection, I go through just this main wall here, which is all my rock stuff. I've got country and R&B and soul off to the side, and um, these these two were uh, almost almost didn't make it into the crate, but I remembered them at the last minute. So those are the only two in here that I've discovered out in the wild digging that I can remember and that I've, that I've held on to, right? Um, all right, so let's move on to a few um, from a few of autographs that I've actually gotten in person. These are my favorite ones because, again, um, they have the most meaning to me since I actually got to meet the musicians. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. That's a long list, but this is the Black Crows' Amorica. It is my favorite Black Crows record. And when I got the opportunity to see them in Austin, this is, uh, I want to say 2012-ish, if I had. No, 2000, yeah, 2012, 2013, right around there. They were playing at Stubbs in Austin, which is not a huge venue. Um, and we splurged for the uh, VIP meet and greet. So we didn't actually run into them, um, you know, by happenstance. But we paid the extra money, did the VIP meet and greet. And the interesting story here was... Um, you were not allowed to bring anything, meaning they, they gave you an autographed poster, which I have, and an autographed laminate, which was really cool. But they said no other outside items were allowed in. So me and my buddy who were doing this um, uh, meet and greet, we thought, well, man, we really want to get a record sign if we're going to spend the money, because those meet and greets aren't cheap, right? If we're going to spend the money. We'd love to get an actual album autograph. So we decided that we'd hang back and be very last because we knew if we were at the front of the line or middle of the line and people saw us with records or a package that we were bringing in that they probably wouldn't even let us kind of go through the line because then of course everyone else is going to feel you know put out that they didn't get something autographed because again you weren't supposed to bring anything in so we waited till the whole thing it was probably i don't know 50 75 people it wasn't massive or anything and it moved pretty quick because you don't get to spend a lot of time with, with the band members. But we, uh, we hung back. We were very last in line. We kind of just played dumb. And as we got up to the line, again, everyone else had already gone through. So there wasn't anyone behind us to where they could say, oh, no, if we let you get an autograph on something, then everyone else is going to have to because everyone else had already gone through. Uh, the security guy was cool. He didn't, he didn't uh, turn us away or, or, or tell us we couldn't get him signed. And as we walked up to the band members who were standing there, and it's a cattle call where you get to go through, shake their hands, and uh, basically say hello, and then you get your autograph poster and laminate, right? As we walked up, um, Chris in particular, Chris Robinson, lead vocalist for Black Crows, saw that I had this kind of under my arm and immediately kind of pointed at me. And he said, ooh, is that the white version? And that was really cool because I knew he knew records. Sure enough, it is the white version. This is an original pressing from 1994. And the next interesting thing was when I pulled it out, I said, would you sign the record? And he said, really, you want me to sign the record? And I said, yeah, don't worry, I've got another copy. And he really liked that. And so I actually had Chris and Rich and, and the rest of the band who was there, um, not all original members, but again, you know, portion of original members in addition to uh, Chris and Rich. I had him actually sign the record. Um, I would have this framed on my wall, but because of the cover um, and the, uh, the risque nature of the cover and me having you know children in the house, it doesn't feel quite appropriate. But I do love it. And like I said, I do have another copy of this album. Um, the other uh, records that I brought, I didn't just bring this one. So I, that was McCrow's record. So I got the whole band to sign that. Then I also brought... Um, solo albums from Chris and Rich. That's not the one I want. I want Big Moon Ritual, which I think is actually right back here. Let's see if I can grab it. I grabbed the wrong record, but that's okay because it's close by. So Chris and Rich have solo records, solo careers as well. Um, this one's hard to see. This is Big Moon, Big Moon Ritual, I believe. Is that the name of this record? Yeah, Big Moon Ritual. And it's hard to see because I got Chris's autograph in uh, black on there. I probably should have done silver. But he was happy to uh, sign one of his solo records. 
And then I also brought one of Rich's solo records and did have him sign in in the silver Sharpie. I think the, the Sharpies were getting passed around, and so that's why uh, the silver one ended up. This is a great record, Through a Crooked Sun, if you're a fan of uh, the Crows tunes. Uh, Rich's solo, solo works are really good, too, and this is a good one. Um, I will say, from meeting the band, uh, Chris was super cool. Uh, like I mentioned, he was, uh, he didn't, I didn't have a long conversation with him, but talked to him about record for just a moment. Rich was very hush hush, didn't really say a word. And the rest of the band was, was cordial and, and shook hands and signed the records. But uh, all in all, uh, a cool experience. It was a very memorable show. Honestly, Stubbs is an outdoor venue in Austin and it poured rain that night during the show, uh, which made it uh, quite treacherous but it was very memorable and they closed with uh, the Stones Jumpin' Jack Flash, which I'll never forget. So it was a fantastic evening. So that's my Black Crows autograph story. All right, next on the list, um, got a couple local artists, but you may have heard of. Um, this is a band called Tripping Daisy and this is their, um, their album, Elastic Firecracker. I am an Elastic Firecracker. Um, huge fan of this band being from Dallas. Um, this is uh, autographed by their lead singer, Tim DeLauder. This is actually a second copy. My, uh, my other copy that I have signed by the whole band, including um, the, uh, the late guitarist, uh, Wes Bergeron, uh, I have that in storage and it's framed and I didn't have a chance to grab it. But the cool thing is that uh, I actually won a raffle at the listening party for this album in 1995. And then I was able to get him to sign it afterwards. And then this copy actually came from a, a friend who worked at that same club called Trees here in Dallas. And he uh, gifted me this copy because um, he's not a vinyl collector and he knew I was. So it was really cool to get a, a second copy signed by the lead vocalist. And I've got that that other copy signed by the whole band. I've also got a, a number of CDs signed by Tripping Daisy because back in the day when they were a local band playing clubs, it was pretty accessible to uh, to get them. Um, and I've got a, a whole collection of, of Tripping Daisy records and a few few autographs. So I love that one. Next on the list is I've got two other local uh, local autographs. This is a band called Flicker Stick. This is out on my record label, uh, the DFW Legacy series that I started a few years ago with a few buddies of mine. If you're not familiar with Flicker Stick, look them up. This is an incredible album called Welcoming Home the Astronauts. Um, they were um, infamous for being on a VH1 TV show called Bands on the Run back in the early. 2000s that's where uh they got a ton of exposure um but they're a phenomenal band and they've actually reformed now when we uh got in touch with them to press this record on vinyl for the first time it actually kind of got the ball, ro ball rolling for them to get back together as a band so they're actually playing shows again which is really neat and they're happy to have the uh um, the majority of their original members um, having signed this one so that's really cool um the last local one i'll mention this is a band called hagfish they used to play a lot of shows with Tripping Daisy, um, and this is signed to me by their lead singer, George, another album that is out on my label, first time on vinyl. So happy to have a few um, few local albums in here from artists that I uh, grew up listening to and really um, opened my eyes to local music back in the day. So that is a few local albums. Um, let's see, I do have a couple in here that um, I bought. I don't do it a lot, but this is an album by Snow Patrol called Reworked. I think I've showed this before on, on a video about compilation albums, but I bought the signed version, went on to buy the record in itself as soon as it was, an, as soon as it was announced because I'm a big fan, and they had the signed version, which I think was the same price, so you did, I didn't have to pay anything more for it. It was just like if you were one of the first X number of um, customers to buy, you could get the signed one, so I was super excited about that. Um, I have seen Snow Patrol a couple times, never had the chance to meet him or anything like that. Um, I've seen him here in Dallas once at a club show, and then I saw them in Milan, Italy, opening for U2, uh, one of my favorite shows I've ever been to. So uh, really cool band and really happy to have that one. Uh, the only other one I believe I've bought would be Brandy Carlisle's In These Silent Days. She does autograph versions of a lot of her albums, and I love her signature, especially on this in the gold, uh, gold, uh, gold pen. Um, like I said, she uh, she does autographed versions of a lot of her records. So uh, all through their, the web store, direct from the artist, which again is probably the only place I'd pay for an autographed album, like the Snow Patrol and like this one. I bought it direct from the web store from the artist. So you know it's legitimate because if you're buying it secondhand and it doesn't come with a certificate of authenticity, then how do you really even know 
um, that it was signed by them, right? So it's kind of meaningless to me, again, unless you met the artist or got it direct from. So I don't buy a lot of them, but those are the only two I've bought. A uh, couple more. This one, um, similar story. Uh, this is a band called Failure. This is a live LP uh, where they perform their uh, iconic album, Fantastic Planet, in full. And it is signed by all three band members in Silver Sharpie. Did not meet them in person, but this did come from the artist's web store as well. Kind of gift. This one was gifted to me from a good friend, and I really appreciate that because it is an album I love. And uh, Fantastic Planet is a very underrated record as far as '90 rock, '90s rock albums are concerned. If you're not familiar with it, and this live version is really cool, so very, very cool uh, collectible there. All right, I've got a couple more. Um, we've got a couple framed items I'm going to show. I'll do that at the end. Um, before I get there, though, I've got a few, which I guess technically aren't signed albums, but um, you'll see what I mean. This is Weezer's Blue Album. Uh, this is not an original pressing. It's a, a, a reissue that I got many years after. Um, the reason why I included this is because I did get the band's signature, but I didn't have the album at the time, but I got it on a promotional flat. For those who don't know, Promotional flat is a 12 by 12 piece of cardboard. Uh, I saw the band um, on this tour at a small club in Dallas um, called Trees, and uh, same place I got the Tripping Daisy autograph. And uh, before they played, they did an in-store at Bill's Records, which was an iconic record store in Dallas. Uh, for many, many years and got their autographs on the flat. I wish I would have had the record at the time, but I keep it with the record, so I kind of consider it a companion piece. And this one was cool, again, too, because I actually met the guys and walked through the line and, and got it got it signed personally, which is why I appreciate it and why I kind of wanted to include it. And a big Weezer fan, um, especially of their first couple records, especially the, uh, the Blue Album, which is fantastic. All right, next on the list, and I just got a couple more. Uh, again, not a signed album, but... Rollins Band, Wait, absolutely underrated uh, 90s album. I love this record. Um, did not get this signed. I hoped to get it signed, but apparently Henry Rollins does not sign anything these days. So I went to see him uh, within the past year um, on his Spoken Word tour. And once again, did the, did the meet and greet and kind of hoped to pull the same trick that we pulled at Black Crows because I was with my same buddy. And, uh, and we kind of waited till the very end and we realized that, oh yeah, no one's getting anything signed and they were very strict. So that's cool. The, we, we knew in advance it was a long shot. But what we did get were a couple of things. With the meet and greet, um, you got a signed laminate, which was cool. So I do have Henry's signature on the uh, laminate there for his uh, Good to See You uh, 2022 uh, spoken word tour, which was his first tour uh, post-COVID. So it was kind of cool to get him to hear about his experiences throughout all of that. The other thing that I bought at the merch table, um, and this is, in my opinion, even cooler than maybe getting the record sign. These are uh, track sheets from his radio show. So it's KCRW, um, and the show was uh, August 9th of 19th, and it's got his handwritten notes on it. Uh, he's got tracks that and breaks that highlighted uh, to kind of keep him on track during the show. It's got his signature here. And you could go through, he had a whole um, a whole binder of these, and you go through and choose whatever pages you wanted. And I think it was only like $10 or $15 or something, which is why I got it. And so it's cool because you can go through and pick out songs, pick out ones that had songs that you really liked. So this one's got Ig Iggy Pop and Bad Brains and Lou Reed. Um, what else has he got on here? Dee Dee Ramone, Beastie Boys. So again, all stuff that he played on his radio show that night. And these are the actual track sheets that uh, that he was uh, taking cues from. And then he signed them and put them in the binder. So I thought that was really cool. And again, in lieu of not being able to get the record signed, having the, uh, having the sign laminate and having these pages, I thought was really neat. And someday I'd love to frame frame all of these with maybe uh, maybe a record as well. But um, really cool and, and in my opinion, a, a great show if you ever if you're into Henry Rollins and, and his spoken word stuff, it's super cool. Super cool. It's like half stand-up comedy, half spoken word, but very entertaining. The guy can talk endlessly and the stories he tells 
are unbelievable to listen to. So that's the majority of them. I do have two more and they are in frames. So I'm going to see how well you can see them. This is, and if you've ever seen a lot of my videos, if you watch anything I do on uh, Instagram or TikTok, where I show my turntable from the side, there's a couple of albums framed in the background. And these are these two frames. So I have got David Gilmore's self-titled album, which I absolutely love, signed. This one, again, I did not meet David Gilmore. I got this from... Um, from a friend um, who also got it from a friend who met David uh, in, the, I, I want to say it was in the mid 90s when he was coming through touring and he did an in-store in support of one of his uh, solo albums and, and uh, got this signed and then it was kind of gifted to my buddy and my buddy gifted it to me. So again, I don't know firsthand if it's real. I, I have looked up uh, David Gilmore's signatures online to see if that looks similar and there's, there are some similarities, but again, I have no no way of knowing and, I, and I'm not going to spend the money to go get it authenticated. In, in my mind, the only real reason to do that is if you're going to sell it and it's not something I'd ever sell. So um, I'm not too worried about it. To me, it's real and, and I take my, my friend's word for it, which is, which is exactly why I framed it and really appreciative that he passed it along. So that's really cool being a big Pink Floyd fan and a David Gilmore fan. That's amazing. Last but not least, and this is one I think I've showed on a couple different videos, um, probably you know, if, if you, if you ask me, Hey, if you're uh, if you could only keep one thing, one record, let's pretend, you know, you're going to lose everything in your home. And what's the one thing you're going to grab from your like record room, your man cave, whatever it is, this would probably be the one thing. This is my signed copy of super unknown by Soundgarden. Um, as you can see, you have Chris Cornell's, um, iconic signature, just like the black crows. I had him sign it on the actual record. Um, I just thought it was really unique, especially since it's the orange vinyl version. I didn't want to take it out of the frame. I was tempted to, but the reason why it's uh, even more special is because um, on the other side that you can't see because I couldn't display it or I, I chose not to display it in this style of frame, over here it actually says 2GI, you rock. And then it's signed by Cornell. Amazing. Um, I did get to meet Chris. This was uh, early 2000s when he was touring in support of one of his solo records. The story is that um, in, at that time I was in the music industry um, on the industry side, not performing and doing a lot of work from a marketing perspective, uh, promotional, graphic design, web design, all those types of things. And I was working with a band called Burning Brides, which if you don't know Burning Brides, look them up, kind of like a Queens of the Stone Age, uh, Perfect Circle type of vibe. They toured with all those bands. And through working with uh, Burning Brides and most uh, notably their, their vocalist and songwriter, Dimitri Coates, who is now in the band Off, if you've heard of the band Off. Um, Dimitri plays guitar in Off. So during Burning Brides, um, Dimitri is very well connected, lives in Los Angeles, and he knew Chris. Uh, and I was very friendly with Dimitri at the time. I, I'm, I haven't been in touch with him in a couple of years, but uh, whenever he swings by Dallas, I'll, I'll usually uh, reach out to him. But um, during that time, I was talking a lot with Dimitri because I was doing the website for the Burning Brides and doing a lot of uh, promotional stuff for them. And I knew he knew Chris and he actually performed with Chris, I believe at that time on the Jay Leno show. Um, and he pr uh, cut some guitar tracks, I believe, um, and maybe even drums on the demos for Chris's solo album. Then Chris went on tour and support that album. And when he came through Dallas, I hit up my buddy Dimitri. I said, hey, you know, I'm going to see Chris, uh, you know, later this week or whatever. Let me know if you can uh, uh, get me in touch with him to meet the man. Sure shit, he hooked me up and I had meet and greet passes. So after the show was over, me and my same buddy who I keep mentioning, we got to go backstage um, and meet the band, um, which again was, was Chris's solo band. So this wasn't Soundgarden, but um, got to go through and talk with Chris for a moment. I've got a picture. Um, I'll, I'll try and find that picture of, uh, of when I actually met him. And again, it was cool. It, we kind of had a similar response. I remember to, to Chris Robinson when I asked him to sign the actual record, he was like, you want me to sign the actual record? I said, yeah, it's cool. I've since got another copy of this, um, a play copy, but just a really special thing, obviously with Chris having passed away, um, you know, having the chance to meet him. I've seen him countless times over the years with Soundgarden, Solo, Temple of Dog, Audio Slave, um, just uh, one of those musicians that I will always cherish. And again, one of those pieces that I will definitely always 
cherish. So uh, that's that's my autographed collection. Like I mentioned, I don't have a ton. There are plenty of people who have way more autographs and seek them out. I've never been one to kind of uh, wait when the show's over by the bus and do that whole thing. Um, for me, um, I'd almost rather the mystique of the artist um, stay as is versus meeting all of my heroes. Because um, sometimes when you meet your heroes, they, it doesn't always turn out to uh, to be what you what you'd hoped. So I'd rather just kind of, kind of like leave that line there in the sand and uh, appreciate them from afar. But I do I do really dig some of these autographs that I do have. So. Um, so there you go. That's my autograph collection. I told you to be pretty brief because I didn't have that many out of my 3,000 records in my collection. I've, I've got, you know, 15 or 20 records or something like that, but uh, all really cool pieces and I'm sure I'll add to it over the years. So there you go. I hope that was cool and enjoyable for you. Um, if you've got some cool autographs in your collection, by all means, uh, put them in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have. Always super fun to hear people's experience with experience with meeting meeting people and getting autographs and that type of thing. So thanks for watching. As always, this has been another episode of Talking About Records. My name is G.I. Sanders, and we will see you again next time.